Welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. In uh, this video, we're gonna do the power steering fluid on this car. And um, after putting the video together, I watched it and then realized that um, I'm gonna get some comments on this. And I just wanted to set things straight before showing the video. Um, the fluid that's recommended for this 2001 Mustang for the power steering is uh, Mercon ATF. That fluid is red. It's not the power steering fluid, which is clear. And uh, I know some of you guys really watch these videos closely and they're very observant and you're gonna notice that. So uh, refrain from commenting on that. Um, I'm aware of that. And I, I went ahead and got some power steering fluid that is compatible with this rig. It's not ETF, but it's still compatible. Now, it's very important that you find a power steering fluid that is compatible because the issue is if you get something that's not compatible, uh, you can have the uh, power steering fluid attack some of the seals and that sort of thing and get premature wear and potentially even some leaks uh, real early and that could lead to a very expensive repair. So definitely get the right stuff. And also, if your car is under warranty, use what's recommended. If it's ATF, put ATF in and then that way there's no questions asked, you won't void your warranty. So anyway, I wanted to make that very clear. There is some controversy out there regarding whether you should use power steering fluid or ATF. And um, I, I guess um, the theory is that the ATF um, is made for automatic transmissions. Automatic transmissions have clutch packs in there. So there's a friction material in there. And so in that fluid, they put a friction modifier. And uh, so the, the thought process is, well, if you put ATF into the steering, you got a friction modifier that's gonna create some additional friction and create more heat and additional wear and that sort of thing. And it's not necessary. So um, they say, go ahead and get the power steering fluid. It doesn't have that. It's going to be easier on the parts. I guess that makes sense. It does to me. That's one of the reasons I'm going this route. Um, however, I could have used the ATF as well. So anyway, I'm going along with the uh, thought process that the uh, power steering fluid is probably going to be better for the power steering system. So anyway, that's what I'm doing here. And again, in the video, you're going to see me using some older stuff that I had laying around that I wanted to use to just do an initial flush and get all the extra dirt and debris and then finish it off with the, the new stuff that I just purchased, which I don't believe I have this in the video. So anyway, that's the thought process there. So you probably ask yourself, well, why does the manufacturer recommend ATF rather than a dedicated power steering fluid? Usually it boils down to dollars. If they can save a few bucks by using one fluid in two different applications, that's obviously gonna save them some dollars. So anyway, that's my theory. I'm not an expert in this, uh, but usually it always boils down to money. So anyway, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started and change the power steering fluid on this car. While we're waiting for a new gasket for the oil pump, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go ahead and replace the power steering fluid in this car. I took a look at it the other day to see if it was at the correct level, and it was. However, the color of the fluid is very, very dark. It almost looks like mud. So anyway, I figured this would be a, probably a good opportunity while the car is off the ground anyway to go ahead and change that fluid. So with that said, let's get started. All right, to give you an idea of what the fluid should look like, it should be relatively clear like this. And uh, sometimes red, some manufacturers call for ATF, which would have a red color, but uh, anyway, it should be transparent. You should be able to see through it. So anyway, this is what it should look like. So let's take a look at what we actually have in the car. <clears throat> you can see the fluid level is okay, but when we look at the actual fluid, this is what we get. Not very clear. So before we start this procedure, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out as much old fluid as I can, and then I'll pour some new stuff in here. So that way we don't pump all this old stuff uh, through the system. It'll just take a little longer. All right, uh, one thing to keep in mind is you never really want to um, get air into the pump. So as soon as you extract uh, some of the old fluid, go ahead and immediately pour some new fluid in. And uh, through this whole procedure, we'll be uh, con routinely checking this to make sure that the level is up as we pump the old stuff out. 
Now let's uh, get into the car here and look for the lines that we need to disconnect. We want to disconnect the low pressure line, which is the return line to the pump. So we can see the pump up there and then we can see two lines here going to the cooler. Uh, these are held on using a little hose clamp. So these are the low pressure lines. The high pressure lines are going to be crimped. So we can take uh, one of these off here and then uh, cap the hard line here with the vacuum cap. And then we'll take this line and then drain it into a bucket here. So let me get this set up and let's get started. Let's go ahead and pull this one off here. Now, as soon as you get this off, it's gonna start leaking fluid immediately. So have something ready to plug the one end and then of course have a bucket ready uh, for the other end. Let's see if we can twist this a bit and get it loose. Okay, it's starting to go. And here we are. And then get this capped immediately. And drain the bucket down here. Uh, to show you the setup I have here, I ran an additional hose from the other rubber hose into the bucket so we can capture the old fluid. And I just uh, found a little connector that fit to the inner diameter of the old hose and went to this clear tube. That way we can see the color when it changes from uh, that dark to clear and we'll know that we have it uh, purged. So <clears throat> anyway, the next step is going to be to unlock the wheels and we're gonna manually do this. Uh, you can do it several different ways. You can actually run the pump uh, with the motor. However, it will drain it very quickly and not a whole lot of control. You could also manually uh, turn the pump by putting in a wrench into the end of the uh, pulley there. To turn the wheels, it'll pump it as well. Okay, I have the key in the ignition, so we should be able to turn the wheel freely. And then we'll just observe this line here and wait for a clear fluid to come out. And we're gonna go uh, full lock to lock. So we'll go ahead and start turning this. And there goes our fluid. All right, uh, so what I did was go ahead and disconnect the serpentine belt and then we can manually spin the power steering pump, pump and then we're gonna go in a clockwise uh, direction, keep an eye on the reservoir here. And then as I spin this, we can see it moving the fluid out. And we'll go ahead and continue this and then move the wheel over to the other side and then continue pumping and do, do that back and forth a number of times until we get all clear fluid. And as you can see, isn't when I spin this, the, the fluid is continuing to go down. So we can keep a very good eye on everything and we have 100% manual control of this. So we don't run the risk of running the pump dry. And you can see this goes down very quickly with each turn. After filling that reservoir probably five, six times, uh, we got uh, clear fluid cl coming out. Then we turn the wheel uh, left to right and then repeat this process. And uh, it's all pretty clear now. So I think we have it completely flushed here. So uh, the next step is uh, going to be to re uh, reconnect uh, the hoses the way that they were. And uh, then start the car up, which we're not going to be able to do yet because we don't have the uh, oil pump on it. Uh, but when we do, we'll go ahead and fire it up and uh, turn the wheel left to right all the way and uh, monitor the uh, fluid level in there and then add as needed and then the job is done. So anyway, that's how you flush the power steering fluid.